Welcome to part one of the Make a Good Mega Man Level 3 slash Mega Mix Engine tutorial series. I am your host, Snow Red Pyro. Um, here, here it is. This is the Mega Mix Engine loaded in Game Maker Studio. Uh, please refer to part zero for how to get this engine because I'm just going to go right into it assuming you know what you're doing. Uh, so, I'm assuming you probably want to create a level with the Mega Man level creator engine thingy. So the first thing you want to do, don't hit create a room. You instead want to do L copy LVL copy this room, right click duplicate. The reason why you have to do this is because this room has a couple things already set up for you, namely the correct screen size uh, and the views, which is basically just the camera. Don't touch these settings because it will break the camera. Um, so first thing you want to do, you probably don't want to be making your room named room 23 or whatever it is on your end. So instead you want to type in LVL. You have to type in LVL first uh, because then that will make the engine recognize that this is a level and it will make it appear in the room selector. Then your username underscore level title. This naming convention is only for Magma 3. If you're just making a level for whatever game, you can just put LVL whatever. Uh, but for Magma 3, you want to follow this naming convention. So here you go. Here's the room editor. Uh, default spawn, uh, presuming that it's not here, you can just place it down and that's where Mega Man will initially spawn when you begin the level. Um, this isn't very much of a level. So let's start over. Let's get rid of these, and let's just place Mega Man right here. So, to get started, let's go to this tab, the tiles. If you click on this, you will get a whole big sidebar of all the tile sets default available in the engine. You can just scroll through them and see all of them. They're here. So let's just use Centaur Man, because why not? So you can basically just click on any 16 by 16 tile in this grid so and you just place them down and you're placing tiles this seems a little boring you can actually mass place tiles by doing this hold shift and you can just drag along your cursor to place as many as one at once but oh no I don't want my level to be like this. How do I delete tiles? You can right click and delete them one at a time or hold control and you can just drag your right mouse button along and delete them. So yeah. Uh, another thing that you can do to make things easier for you is that when you're clicking on the tile menu, you can hold shift and drag to select multiple tiles at once. So, we can just do this. Voila. Hooray. Let's place a couple trees. These are trees, right? Already, we're making a great level. Let's hit this check button and let's test the level. So, one thing that I have to say really quick. This is, this is not going to be the speed that the game is going to save at and compile at when you do it yourself. Uh, it is only going this fast because I ran it beforehand. Um, but after you compile the game once, it will speed up significantly. So don't worry about it. It, it probably won't be a problem. Probably. Alright, so here we go. Magmix Engine is open. And let's just go to the stage select. Here you go. Here is my level. Uh, it's apparently been renamed to my level because the room name is too long. But let's go. Well, that's not supposed to happen. So you can't actually just place down tiles and the game will magically know that they're supposed to be solid. Instead, you have to click on, click into the objects tab and just click anywhere here, it doesn't really matter. 
This will bring up this drop down menu and you can see all the objects in the engine. You want to go to collision. There's a bunch of stuff here. We're probably looking for object solid. So just place them all here. Again, you can just uh, hit this time shift and control to drag around objects. I don't know why it's a different command than uh, tiles, but okay. You can just click on an object and drag it around. You can right click it to get all these settings. Uh, you can hit edit object to see the source of that object. Very helpful for when an object has some customization that you need to reference. I'll talk about some of these other ones later. Uh, for now though, this is all we need to make these platforms actually solid. Uh, so there's a couple other things in this folder. You've got top solids, which are basically just one-way platforms or top only solids, whatever you want to call them, jump through platforms. They'll only be solid from the top, otherwise you can jump straight through them. I should be fairly self-explanatory. Uh, ladders should also be pretty self-explanatory. You climb on them. Uh, spikes will insta-kill Mega Man when you touch them. Damage spikes will do 7 damage to Mega Man when you touch them. Though I believe the amount of damage they do is actually customizable. Water is self-explanatory. Boss barrier. This will make any tiles and objects over uh, something destroyed when there's no mini boss or boss in the area. Um, and possibly enemy. I don't remember off the top of my head. Boss doors. Uh, there's slopes down here. And object setter, which I will talk about in a little bit. Uh, so let's just spice this up a little bit. I don't think we can settle for just a few trees in the background. All right, it's absolutely perfect. So I don't think that you want just one screen in your level. So how do you change the size of the room? Well, first you have to go to settings here where we went to change the name earlier. And there's the width and height of the room. So you can just type in whatever number it'll make the room bigger. But there is one thing that you have to do in the engine to make sure that the camera works properly on most occasions. If you know what you're doing, you don't have to make it make a, abide by this rule, but it's a good idea to do this anyways. Uh, you should always have your width and height of a room be in multiples of 256 for the width and 224 for height. This is basically just NES screen size. So 512 is just two screens. Uh, a good way to just give yourself a bunch of space, just add a zero and you have 10 by 10 room. Uh, plenty of space to work with. Uh, so we can just place some more tiles and just continue on in our level building adventure. All right. For reference, if you ever mess up, you can hit undo. Though up here, uh, though this undo button's a little bit limited in that you can only undo your last change. And if you just hit it again, it'll just redo your last change. So. It's a bit limited, but yeah. On the topic of editor features, uh, you can also turn on a grid if you want to burn your eyes off. And there's also this button where you can shift all instances in the room by a given amount. So if I accidentally, if I want to put like a pit on the right or something, I can shift everything over by two blocks. And you have to do this separately for tiles. But it's helpful. It's not as good as a like click and drag everything over, which unfortunately is not in this room editor. Uh, but it's still helpful if you can, if a disaster happens and it's salvageable through that. So let's test this again. So now that we've placed Collision, Mega Man will now not fall to his death. And now there's just a black void in the middle of nowhere. So how can we make this not just infinitely extend to the void? Well, you're going to want to go into sections and you'll get a bunch of stuff here. If you want to just stop the screen from scrolling right there, then you can place a stop scrolling horizontal. Uh, if you want this screen to scroll though, when you go off screen there though, you want to use whatever screen transition is appropriate for that situation. Uh, right scrolling will just make it scroll right and nothing else. 
Left will do the same, but for left and horizontal, we'll make it both ways. You can also just place a right scrolling and a left scrolling right next to each other <clears throat> to make a double way transition, but we added the horizontal scrolling just for convenience's sake. So now we can make other screens. Tiling is hard enough, so what if I don't really want to place collision for all of this? Well, there's actually one specific thing that we could do so that we only have to place tiles down. We can use the object setter that I brought up earlier. Uh, it'll essentially be an object that'll allow the game to just place tiles for you when the, you place tiles down in the editor. You also may know it as the auto tiler. It's, it's the same thing. How you use it is that you essentially put the object setter object in the top left corner of a tile set and then just place whatever you want the tiles to act as the collision objects over them. So these would be solids, the ladder tiles right there, make them ladders, spikes, you can put a boss door, and now essentially all of these tiles are going to be solid for us. We don't have to do anything extra. So that's pretty neat. There's also a couple other objects in the sections folder. There's vertical scrolling, so if you want to go down a screen, you would place it here. I'll add a vertical section maybe later. Um, don't forget your stop scrollings. There's section free vertical scrolling, where if you place it where a section battery would be, uh, like right here, it also works here. Uh, it doesn't really matter where you place it. It'll make the camera freely scroll, a la the big vertical sections in Mega Man 8. There's also soft border, which I'll talk about a little later, and there's fade transition, where you can just place it on a boundary to make it so when you cross the screen boundary, it'll fade as it transitions. It's kind of annoying to place all of these, though, all one at a time. So there's actually a neat thing that you can do in Game Maker Studio that you couldn't do in 8.1. You can grab the sides of an object and stretch them. Usually this will lead it to becoming the wrong size, so you can actually manually edit the scale X here, and you can just make it 1. And voila! Now it's going to do that properly. You can do this with any object, though it only works- it doesn't work with everything. It does work with section borders, so if you only want the player to like transition in a specific part of the screen, you can make this smaller and that'll work just fine. Um, and soft borders, you can stretch them too. Uh, these essentially act as a camera locker, where if you get close enough to them, uh, they will force the screen to be beyond what this object is placed as. Um, it, whatever direction that it locks the screen in depends on what its X scale is. So if, if you want it to like face, right now, if you get close to it, it'll lock the screen, making the camera travel right. Uh, but if you want it to make it travel left in a left scrolling section, you can hit the flip X button and it'll do that. You can do this with a lot of objects too and they'll work. Uh, you can also do flip Y, but that's not really going to do anything for this object. It will do things for other objects, which I'll cover later, but don't flip Y because you have a soft border vertical for that. So, yeah, there you go. So that's it for the basics of just tiles and sections and such. But you probably want to have enemies in a Mega Man level. So let's go to the enemies tab and place a few down. There's a lot of enemies here, so you have plenty to work with. Let's go with a classic Mega Man 1 Met. You just place them down, and there you go. It's, it's gonna be a Met. So, you can place one here, and here. This isn't actually a very good level, but it's just an example, so whatever. And let's go for, I don't know, let's put a hothead here. 
this is all examples. This is not my level design tutorial, so just, just, just keep in mind. And you know what? Let's put a mini boss here. Let's put hot dog here. Gotta probably add some tiles first, though. And just for fun, let's place boss barriers here so that you're gonna fall down once you beat the mini boss and go to a different area. Let's test this. So now when playing levels, we now have enemies to fight. And proper fading here. And now we can fight enemies. And the mini boss is facing the wrong way. And there's all these kinds of black spaces. How do we fix these problems? Well, for mini bosses, you just want to hit the flip X button like I said earlier. You will have to do this for all mini bosses. Mini bosses will usually not face the player. Uh, there is a way to make them automatically face the player, but I'll talk about that in another video. And to fix the black space behind tiles, you can add tile layers. Uh, to do so, just depth is basically just the rendering order. The higher the number is, the lower or the farther behind tiles it'll be rendered. Um, if it's higher or negative, then it'll be rendered above uh, most things. So if you make a tile layer that's like negative 10 or something, it'll be above Mega Man. Uh, the default's a million. You can just add a bunch of zeros. It'll it there's a cap to the de depth, so beware. But then we can actually place some tiles behind this without having to uh, mess up the regular solid tiles. Uh, if you want to check a layer, hide other layers is a very helpful button. Right now you can't see anything, but you can solve that by hitting this magnify glass. Uncheck show objects, and now you can just check to make sure that, yep, the tiles are there. Uh, and you can also do this, just remove tiles, so now it's all objects. I find this pretty helpful, uh, so hopefully it'll be the same for you. So, there you go. That's the basics, essentially. Now you can build a level. Uh, most of the other basics should be pretty self-explanatory. Like items, for example. Just place one. You're done. And, yeah. Next video, I'm going to be covering a couple more advanced things, such as adding music, uh, animating tiles, and the creation code option here. See you next time.